Where are we gonna go? Where to? Where are the fish gonna bite? So many choices. Screw it, we'll pull in here. The audio sucks, guys. I'm going to get this fixed. I have new audio coming this week, I swear. I'm getting rid of my GoPros. I'm trying a little something different. I'm getting some better. This is ridiculous. I can't even film a freaking show. Doing something I didn't really want to talk about. Because we were just fun fishing. But now I think we're going to have to make a video about it. Well, uh, he's a little bigger than five. I underestimated the size of this smallmouth. And if we can get him away from the boat, and he cooperates, he might be able to get a glimpse of him. He, he won't give up, dude. So, I think I have a hook, I, I think I have him hooked pretty good. But that's a stud. Wow, open up. Oh, yes, we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about that bait. First, let's, let's admire this fish. Look at that. That is a, uh, that's a big one. That's definitely the biggest northern bass so far this year I've caught. Stud. that first fish. But another good fish, nonetheless. And what I'm doing is I'm actually swimming ever so slowly this rage baby menace. And so I'm, it's on a regular net head and all I'm going to do is cast it out really far and slowly reel it, tick in the bottom. We're only in three feet of water. It's a really good pre-spawn technique when those fish start to move up. And I've uh, never talked about it on my channel before, so I'm uh, excited to share, share that with you guys. What's neat about that is you can also just swim it. I guess there's other baits that are working too. Well, you're wrecking the whole show. I'm done. Done. Well, why you gotta why you gotta catch him on a on a on a on a gajo? Gajo, Gajo stick. stick. <laughs> Why you gotta do that? I'm trying to swim a menace. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize. Jeez. What are you gonna do? Boat flick and uh, break your line almost? Boat that was almost two. I want, you know, if you caught, if it was like an ounce bigger, uh, you shouldn't be boat flipping that. Nice, nice. Yeah, that's just under four. On the Gajo stick. On the Gajo stick. Who would imagine? Who'd the, imagine the owner of the gajo fish. stick catching a fish on a gajo stick? On the water great conditions it was a beautiful spring day for us and those smallmouth now here's what sucks we, we met we caught a lot of fish on this technique here 
but the problem is the audio was terrible. The good news is I got some new cameras and new audio equipment coming in the mail this week. So hopefully moving forward, I'm not going to have to deal with this anymore because there's nothing more painful than knowing that you had captured some really awesome footage. You talked a lot about the technique, everything was going good, and I get back here in the studio, I take a look at the video, and it's just like, it's crap. So the rod I was using uh, was a seven foot. Uh, I'll use a medium or a medium light. Uh, I was throwing the one tenth ounce size. Headlocks. I don't know if you can see that. I got them marked. So I got. I have all of them labeled, and then I I take them out of the packages and I put them in one big bag here. All different uh, colors, and then all the sizes are matched up and put in this main bag. And so I was using the Z-Man Nedlocks head which is a great head. I use it a lot for the, the Ned Rigs, the, the three inch Ned Rigs. So when I'm throwing the smaller size, like if I'm gonna throw a 1 15th or a 110, that seven foot medium light rod, a fast action is going to be probably the best bet for me. And I'll braid, I'll use braid, light braid to a fluorocarbon leader, eight pound test fluorocarbon leader with that technique. And I was really just swimming that bait along really slow. So I'm going to use the Rage Baby Menace. It's a real neat little bait. I use this on the back of a swim jig a lot, but in this situation here, uh, we were just targeting uh, pre-spawn smallmouth. So whenever I have smallmouth up shallow, somewhat stained water, which is what we had, this this uh, this Baby Menace is really going to come into play because of the action, because it just gives real, real small little kicks as you're swimming that along, and just a little bit extra vibration. And I think those fish really can key in on that specific technique. There's other days when dead sticking or working a bait a lot slower is going to get you more bites. But today it warmed up. It was later in the afternoon and those fish became more active. And so the baby menace, you know, green pumpkin, you know, black and blue is a sleeper color. I started out with green pumpkin. I caught that good fish on it. But throughout the day... I decided why not let's try the black and blue and so all I'm doing how I rig that is like that so that's the setup now I know you what you're thinking that's a small hook it looks too small it those fish come up and hail that and when I'm reeling I'm just continuing to reel at that rod level it's like a swim jig bite if you will uh, that's how I'm setting the hook so I'm not getting too aggressive with the hook set either and this bait just crawling it, bumping along the bottom. It's just kicking. It's a continued movement. Sometimes it's a little slower. Once in a while, and I don't know if you'll see this in the video, but I'll actually come across some structure, come across some rock, and I feel it, and I'll just stop it. I'll stop it in that zone. And sometimes when it's just sitting there, you can pick up a bite. But oftentimes, as soon as you start reeling again, that's when those fish are going to grab it. So a really cool technique. Don't discount black with blue fleck especially for smallmouth. I know standard natural colors uh, is what the norm is, but I'll tell you what, it was, I could tell a difference when I switched over to the black and blue over green pumpkin. All right guys, setup today was a seven foot medium light rod. I'm using light braid to a fluorocarbon leader. Doesn't change much with me, eight pound test leader. And just using a little Ned head for my head on that baby menace. And so I'm just, Fan casting, picking out areas, you know, here we got some wood and some good rock offshore. I'm casting it out and I'm just rod tip down and just real slow reeling. Now you're gonna feel that fish bite and you don't wanna set the hook too hard. You wanna make sure that fish has that bait in its mouth. Anytime you're swimming a bait, just like if it was a swim jig. There, see, maybe I maybe I got too anxious and I, I pulled the, 
pulled it out of his mouth a little too soon. I should have let that fish bite a little bit. So let's cast it out. Let it fall to the bottom. We're about six feet of water. Rod tip down. Slow retrieve. It's just bumping on the bottom every once in a while. And I'm going to try to tell you when I have a bite and then watch how I set the hook. There's going to be a little bite and there he is. See, I just, a lot of times when, that's a big one. A lot of times when you say bite, oh wow, that's decent. You know, you set right away. You just got to give them just a little bit more time so they can turn on that bait and get that hook in their mouth. Oh wow, he's bigger than I thought. Four or just under four pounds. Tattooed. And it fell out with a pretty small mouth. What a gorgeous stay on the water, guys. I, I encourage you to try this technique. It's something I, I haven't talked about yet on my channel. Like I said earlier, it does put some good fish in the boat. Uh, we had a blast today. Hey guys, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And as always, until next time, we'll see you on the water.